Hello, this is Mike Leiva, and today we're going to be installing the SQL Server Express 2008. And uh, I just want to let you know that the installation is going to be different depending on what machine that you're on. And what we're doing in this specific example is we're actually doing a full install. So we're assuming there's no SQL Server on your machine. You don't have to decide what components to put in, or you're not installing over another one. We're just going to do a full install. Now, to do the install, you're going to want to, of course, go to um, the download, which is Microsoft.com Express Database. And you need to determine if you have a 64-bit or 32-bit machine. And the way you do that is just go to your computer. So come over here to Computer tab. And right-click on the icon and go to Properties. And in your computer properties, you can determine if you're a 64 or 32-bit system. In this particular case, this is a 64-bit system, so that's what we need to download. So let's go to the Microsoft site and let's download the software needed. So we're on the Microsoft.com slash Express slash Database site, and we're going to download the important software. And what you're going to see here is you can get started with the SQL Server Express. Now, Express doesn't mean light in a sense. This is a full-featured database management system. It's going to enable you to do whatever you need to do with a database. But I don't want to click on this tab right here. I actually want to go uh, to Other Installation Options. And when I do, you see there's a number of installation options that you have. You can install the database only, the management tools, or the database and management tools, or the database with advanced services, and we're going to choose that one. In my particular case, I am installing 64 bits, so go ahead and click on that and install that on your machine. Now, once you've done that, you need to go ahead and uh, start the install process just by clicking on the download. So here's my SQL Express 64-bit uh, install. Let's double-click on that and start the process. Now, it's going to unpack the files, and so you can go get a cup of coffee right now because it's going to take a little bit of time here. Now, after the files have unpacked, you should get a screen like this. And let's go ahead and click on Planning. And in the Planning uh, section, there's a number of things in there, hardware and software requirements, security documentation, online release, setup documentation, um, install upgrade advisor, system configuration checker, online installation help, and so on. What I want to do is start by clicking on the system configuration checker. And that's going to launch a tool. We're going to see if we have all the package that we need to install SQL Server. Now, if we don't, we'll need to go fix those issues, and then we can do a full install. But first, let's click on System Configuration Checker. And this is actually going to take a while, so you can go get your second cup of coffee. So we went through our setup support rules, and we found out that our machine was ready to go for the installation. But sometimes that's not the case, and you do have to actually uh, install software. For example, here's a case where the Windows PowerShell was missing, and I actually had to go to the web on this particular installation, uh, find the PowerShell, download it, and install it. And once I did, SQL Server was ready to be installed. Okay, now that we've done the planning part in a sense, let's go to Installation. And we're going to do a new installation, so go ahead and click on that. And we see that uh, SQL Server 2008 R2 is going to think about it just a little bit. And once again, we're going to run through a series of setup support rules. I hope you're really enjoying that cup of coffee because this is a long install and in some cases it can take as much as two hours. Okay, we're in the setup support files screen and once again SQL Server and once again SQL Server is looking at the setup support files. SQL Server is once again thinking about the process. Now once again SQL Server is looking at the support rules and we're going to do a new installation and go ahead and hit next. Go ahead and read the license, and if you agree with it, go ahead and check I accept the license terms, and hit Next. Now at this point, you can actually select what you want to install, but we're going to select all, and then go ahead and hit Next. So at this point, what we want to do in the instance configuration, just go ahead and hit Default Instance, and I should say MSSQL Server, which is very important, so make sure you've done that, and we're just going to hit Next. So at this point, you could actually divide it out a number of different uh, service accounts, but we didn't do that. We just took the default install. Uh, you could uh, hit the Collation tab and actually change the uh, type of characters that you might deal with in the database. If you click on Collation, for example, what we've chosen basically is a Latin base. So we're going to keep that. We're not going to change this, but just remember if you're dealing with other languages such as Chinese or Russian, for example, in your database, you're going to need to change this, but we're good for now. So let's go back to Service Accounts. Everything seems to be okay, so go ahead and hit Next. So at this point, as far as the authentication is concerned, you want to make sure that you go ahead and choose a Windows authentication mode. The data directories will show you where everything is being installed, so you want to make sure you take a look at that and understand where the files are going. And the file stream, we're just going to leave that alone for now. We're going to leave this alone, but we're going to take care of this in the SQL Server Management Database system.
So let's go back to the previous tab by clicking on Account Provisioning and make sure that you clicked Add Current User. And hit Next. So we're going to install the native uh, mode default configuration, so no need to change anything here. Just hit Next. We're not going to do any type of uh, error messaging with Microsoft, so just hit Next. So the installation process has begun. This is going to take a while, so go get your third cup of coffee. So after a delicious third cup of coffee, your installation should be complete, and, uh, and go ahead and hit Close. And let's check it out. So what we want to do is go ahead and go down to the uh, uh, Windows Explore bar here and click on that and go to Programs. And in Programs, you're going to find a, a new MySQL Server 2008 R2 tab. Click on that. And you got some really important stuff here that you're actually going to be using. It's going to be the uh, SQL Server Management Studio. You're going to need to actually work with the server and the databases themselves. And very important, the configuration tools. And the configuration tools, you're actually interested in the SQL Server Configuration Manager. So let's go ahead and pin those. I'll right-click on uh, the SQL Server Configuration Manager. We're going to open that first. So let's go ahead and uh, right-click on the SQL Server Configuration Manager. And let's go ahead and pin that to the taskbar. Same thing with the SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to right-click on that and pin that to the uh, taskbar as well. So now we have those two items pinned to the taskbar. We're ready to open up the taskbar and have immediate access to those items and begin working with them. So there's my SQL Server Configuration Manager. Let's click on that and see what we have. And you'll be using this tool quite a bit. And one of the things I want to look at is just click on these SQL Server Services. And very important here, you got this MSS server. And right now we have it on automatic and it's running. So with that, we should be able to connect to our Management Studio. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And in an upcoming video, we're going to talk about how to use these different tools. So go to your menu bar and click on SQL Server Management Studio. And it's from this tool you'll actually be able to manage all your different databases. So what I actually want to do, I want to actually um, connect to the actual database in this system. And I, I actually want to connect locally. So what I can do here to connect locally, I can actually put a dot. So just put a dot here for local, a period, and go and hit connect. And you can see we actually connect it to our databases. Here they are, and we're going to talk all about this next time and get you building some dynamic systems. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and this was installation of uh, SQL Server 2008 R2.